Hello again, this is problem number two on the recent Spring 2015 course MLC examination in the written answer section. You are given an excerpt from a triple decrement table. You're only really given information for age 60. There is a thousand people in the population at the beginning of the, of the year of that age. D60 upper one of them depart die due to cause one. 60 of them depart die due to cause two. And um, 45 of them on the part of die due to decrement three. You are also given the following information about the decrements. The force of uh, decrement one at age 60 plus t is 1.2 t for t between zero and one. And decrement 2 happens exactly halfway through the year. Decrement 3 happens at the end of the year. We're supposed to calculate the probability of dying from decrement 2 in the associated single decrement table. So in the world in which other causes of departure, causes of death, being here decrement 1 and decrement 3, do not operate at all. And we're supposed to calculate the number of uh, this population who died due to decrement 1 in that year. For the s next part, um, we suppose that decrement 2 occurs at the start of the year and that each um, probability of dying due to decrement i in the associate decrement single decrement table remains unchanged. State with reasons the effect increase decrease no change cannot be determined that this change would have uh, on the following probabilities. And here we are looking at the observed probabilities of uh, departure due to uh, cause of decrement 1 decrement 2 and decrement 3. For part A we need to calculate Q prime 60 upper 2. That's the probability of dying from cause 2 decrement 2 in the associated single decrement table and that's calculated as the number of observed deaths due to decrement 2 at age 60 divided by the number of lives exposed to decrement 2 at that age. Now we know the number of observed deaths due to decrement 2 that's given in the table as 60. Um, decrement 2 occurs exactly in the middle of the year. So we interested in the number of people alive just before that, just in the middle of the year, who can die from cause 2. Now notice that decrement 3 does not occur at all until the end of the year, so it does not affect the number of people alive are exactly in the middle of the year. Only people um, that, I'm sorry, the only decrement that, that matters is decrement 1, um, and we need to calculate how many people survive from ravages of being uh, subjected to decrement 1 from age 60 to age 60.5. So that's a product of 1,000, the initial population, times the probability of survival from only decrement 1 between ages 60 and 60.5, which is 0.5p prime 60 upper 1. How is that probability calculated? It's the e to the minus integral of the force. And the formula for the force is 1.2t, and we integrate that from 0 to 0.5, take e to the minus that. The integral of 1.2t is 0.6t squared. We evaluate it from 0 to 0 0.5. At 0, at 0, at 0.5t squared is 0.25, or a quarter. So we need to take a quarter of 0.6. Half of 0.6 is 0 0.3, and half of that is the quarter of 0.6. So we get 0.15. So the answer is that it's 1,000 times e to the negative 0.15. That's approximately 860.7080. And using more precise calculation, you could have taken this to be also 861. That's really not a problem. But 
um, we get, using more precise calculation, we get the probability to be 0 0.0697. For part B, in order to calculate d60 upper 1, we first note that 0.5 d60 upper 1, based on what we just calculated, so the number of people who depart due to cause 1 between ages 60 and 60.5, that's 1,000 minus 860.7080 because 860.7080 is how many are alive at, um, at age 60.5. So that's 139.2920. Furthermore, at exact age 60.5, 60 people are taken out of the population by decrement 2. That's given in the table. So 800.7080 are remaining. Then the number who survive from ravages of decrement 1 between age 60.5 and age 61 till the moment just at the end of that year of age when decrement 3 hits them is, um, well, 800.7080 uh, times the probability of survival from decrement 1, which is the prime probability because nothing else operates that and that's equal to the ratio of 1 p prime 60 1 upper 1 over uh, p prime uh, 60 upper 1 um, for 0.5 so that's the ratio of surviving for a year divided by probability of surviving for 0.5 year and we're doing it this way because we have the formula for the force in relation to age 60 not in relation to age 60.5 so we switch both calculations to age 60. We use um, the probability is calculated as e to the minus integral of the force. The first integral at the top is from 0 to 1, the second one from 0 to 0.5, the one at the bottom. The one at the bottom we already calculated is e to the negative 0.15. The other one, well the integral 1.2t is 0.60 squared. We evaluate it from 0 to 1 so it becomes e to the negative 0.6. So Ratio of that is e to the negative 0.45, we multiply it by 800.7080, and we get 510.5539. So the number of people who depart due to cause 1, the decrement 1, between ages 60.5 and 61, over the next half a year between ages 60.5 and 61, is 800.7080 uh, minus that number of survivors and that's 290.1541 so the total number of this is the sum of the two 139.2920 plus 290.1541 or 429.4461 I know a fractional number of people very strange thing I should maybe take um, whole integers for this but it's more fun this way um, anyway I'm trying to be precise because I'm, I worry that I may make a mistake in the calculation, miss something. So I always try to be precise. If you are supposed to give the answer as a whole number, give it that way, but do the calculations precisely, just to make sure. Now for part C, part 1, we assume that decrement 2 occurs at the start of the year, and um, Q prime 60 upper 1 is 1 minus the probability of survival. Now, the probability of survival from age 60 to age 61 is now totally under the discretion of uh, decrement 1, by the way, because decrement 2 occurs at the start of the year, decrement 3 at the, the end of the year, decrement 1 does all the rav ravaging that it does between 60 and 61 by itself. Regardless, this is 1 minus the probability of survival and it's 1 minus the integral of the force and it's actually the integral we already calculated 1 minus e to the negative 0 0.6 and that ends up being 0 0.4512. The probability of um, uh, survival uh, Q prime 60 upper 2 it's supposed to be unchanged. So we calculated based on what it was before and it's 0.0697 and q prime upper 2 
it's also unchanged and we had 45 people dying out of 510.5539 so it's 0 0.0881 so all of this is actually these these prime calculations of probabilities are supposed to be the same the values of the probabilities are supposed to be the same but now since decrement 1 acts after decrement 2 and before decrement 3 and kind of completely separated the observed probability of dying from cause 1 will be um, 1000 times now notice this 1 minus q prime 2 60 why is that well that's the number of people who will survive after decrement 2 kills them at the beginning of the year so that's the population available for dying from cause 1 nobody else is those who died from decrement 2 are not available anymore and only on those people decrement 1 operates and how many does it kill well it's whatever the population is times q prime over the next year and that's all divided by 1000 so we can cancel the 1000 1000 is the population at the beginning of the year when there is no prime you only take the population at the beginning of the year not population exposed to dying from the cause which is with the prime probability so this ends up being 1 minus q prime 2 60 times q prime 60 upper 1 we plug in the known numbers that ends up being approximately 0.4197 and previously it was well what was it number of deaths observed from cause 1 we calculated that um, and that's divided by the total population at the beginning of the year. So it was 0.4294. So the probability went down because previously all 1,000 lives were exposed to decrement 1 from age 60 till age 60.5. And only after that, decrement 1 operated only on lives left after ravages of decrement 2. But now decrement 2 gets to ravage the population first, exactly at age 60, and leaves smaller observed exposure for, for uh, decrement 1 to operate on, smaller number of people that can die from decrement 1. Since we are calculating observed probability, uh, we calculate um, we calculated with respect to the original population of 1,000, uh, so we the numerator in the calculation goes down um, because smaller exposure results in fewer observed deaths but the denominator 1000 the initial population remains the same remember that these these observed probabilities are calculated with respect to the initial population now for part two here for decrement two observed deaths will now be 1000 times q prime 60 upper 2 at the beginning of the year that's just 69.7 versus 60 previously so the observed probability of dying from decrement 2 will go from 60 out of a thousand to now 69.7 out of a thousand 0.0697 so it will increase notice that now the prime probability is the same as the non-prime probability for decrement 2 because decrement 2 gets to act first so other decrements do not affect it at all that's why the two probabilities ends up being the same this increase is the result of decrement 2 operating on all 1000 lives at the beginning of the year versus previously operating on a smaller exposure of only 860.7080 lives that survived the ravages of decrement 1 from age 60 until age 60.5. Now let's look at part 3. The observed probability of dying from decrement 3 was previously 45 over 1,000. 45 people died, initial population was 1,000. Now it will be, well, we will have 1,000 people to start with, and then uh, decrements 1 and 2 will operate on them. And eventually decrement 3. And if you write out all the numbers that we have, you will get this to be 0.045 now. The key insight here is that while decrement 1 and 2 operate kind of in different order, they 
operate before decrement 3 and they do their thing completely and while in different order they they both hit the population before decrement 3 gets to it um, so the result is that whatever they ravage is actually um, the same in both cases and decrement 3 gets to again kill exactly uh, 45 people just like before so the the reason for why this happens is that decrement 3 is separated from operations of decrement 1 and 2 in both cases and it still kills 45 people out of the initial population of 1000 no matter how they handle survival from the ravages of the decrements 1 and 2 before decrement 3 got to them so q upper 360 is 0 0.045 and it's unaffected we could also note that the probability of survival till the moment when decrement 3 operates uh, is in both cases p prime uh, 60 upper 1 times p prime 60 upper 2 even though the survival mechanism operates somewhat differently in the two cases uh, so you have to actually do a proof of this for the first case in the second case it's obvious um, uh, and that that means exactly what I was saying that decrement 3 hits the same number of people uh, with its mortality at age 61 in either case and hence the number of observed deaths from decrement 3 will be exactly the same. And let me remind you at the end that these exercises um, 